So now we understand the basic principles behind Excel formulas, it's time to take a look at the six most popular. And in general, these are the six functions that people tend to learn first when they're learning Excel, but they're also some of the most useful. You'll find yourself using these formulas on a daily basis. So it's a good idea to understand exactly what they do right off the bat. And fortunately, these are very simple formulas. So I'm working with the same data set that we were working with in the previous lesson. We just have a list of company names and these are completely made up company names. We have their revenue and then we have a column containing the profit. And what I've got in column F are the six formulas that we're going to be taking a look at. Now, the first one, sum, we took a brief look at this in the previous lesson. So we should be reasonably familiar with how this one works. Sum just simply adds up a range of numbers. So if we type equals into the cell to let Excel know that we want to type a formula, we can then type in sum, press tab to select it from the list and put in that first bracket. And then we can select whatever it is that we want to add up. Now, in these examples, we're going to and we're going to add up the revenue. So I'm going to click in the first cell, control shift down arrow to make my selection, close the bracket, hit enter. And oops, what do I have here? Well, if you ever see these hash symbols in a column, it simply means that the column is not wide enough to display all of the numbers. So all we need to do is widen out this column. Now, notice if I hover my mouse between columns G and H, I get a little double headed arrow cursor. So I can either click and manually drag back and forth or alternatively, if I double click, it will auto expand that column to the width of the value that's in the cell. And now we can see the sum. Now, the next most common function is count. So what exactly does count do? Well, count will allow you to count the number of items in a selected cell range. So, for example, if I wanted to know how many companies I have in this list, I could use count. But there is a caveat to this. When you use count, it will only count the number of items in a column that contains numeric data. So if I type in equals count again, press the tab key to select it from the list. If I decide that I want to count the number of companies and then I go in and I select this range just here and close the bracket and hit enter, it's going to tell me that there's zero. And that is because the column that I've used contains text as opposed to numbers. Now we can do this. We just simply need to count one of the other columns. So I'm going to select this column instead, close the bracket, hit enter. And it's telling me that I have effectively 20 items in this list. Hi, from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course, and gain access to over 200 courses ad free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching, and back to the course. And 20 items in this case would relate to 20 companies. So just remember, count only counts numeric data. If we did want to perform the same calculation on a text column, that is where we use count A. Because count A stands for count all, and it will count everything, no matter if there are numbers or text in the cell. So if we use count A for this one, tab to select, I could then count the number of companies close the bracket, hit enter, and of course I get 20. So just remember that distinct difference between these two. Average, well, that works pretty much in the same way. So maybe I want to find out what our average profit was across all of these companies. I can type in equals, average, select the profit column, close the bracket, and hit enter. And I can see that the average profit was 26,386. Now the next one is min. And what min will do is it will produce the lowest value in a range of cells. So if I want to find out what the lowest profit is in here, I could use min. So we can type in equals min, press the tab key, select the profit column. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts this time, control shift down arrow, close the bracket, 
hit enter and I can see that 9535 is the lowest amount of profit so Sinotech Solutions had the least profit and if I want to do the opposite of that and find out which company had the most profit I could use max again it's the same deal control shift down arrow close the bracket hit enter 44,142 is the highest profit and that is this one just here quantum wear technologies so these are the six most basic formulas that you can find in Excel. Now, the final thing that I want to mention in here is that for these big six functions, we also have access to this information in the status bar. So what do I mean by that? If I select the entire profit column, cast your eyes down to the status bar right at the bottom. Notice what we have in there. We have all of the answers that we have in the spreadsheet. And if you're wondering why the sum value is different in the status bar to what we have in the spreadsheet, it's because for the first one, I summed the revenue as opposed to the profit. And we currently have the profit column highlighted. So these are brilliant because it means that I don't actually have to do the calculation in order to see those totals. So you can imagine if I'm sitting at my desk and my manager comes over and says, what's the total of all of the revenue? I don't have to sit there messing around with formulas. I can simply go control shift down arrow and I can tell him the total simply by looking down in the status bar. Now, if you highlight a range of cells and you can't see any of these, right click on the status bar and make sure that you have a tick next to average count, numerical count, minimum, maximum and sum. Once these are ticked, you'll be able to see those values in the status bar. So that's a very quick rundown of the six most basic formulas that you'll use in Excel. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.